Hey guys, it's Jackson here from Titanic Games. Today we're going to be setting up a first person and third person perspective toggle. So if you've ever played a game where you can uh, have both a first person view and then switch to like a third person view, that's kind of what we're going to be doing here. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing we're going to need to do is go to our uh, epic launcher, go to the marketplace and find this animation starter pack because we're going to be using the animations uh, and kind of the character provided here to represent our third person body. Okay, So we're going to say add to project and I'm going to add this to my perspective toggle project. All right, And once it's been added we'll be able to see back in the content browser that our animation starter pack is now here. All right, so if we go into the folder here, we can see that this is the character that we're going to be using as our third person uh, character. All right, so uh, next, what I should do is point out that I am using the first person example template here, so I already have some first person uh, arms. Uh, but you know, if you don't, if you're using like a different template, then just import your own arms or migrate the ones from this project over, um, or whatever. All right, so anyways, we're going to take our first person character here and edit him. Okay. And we need to make a couple changes here. Now, first thing I'm going to do is just strip out everything that we really don't need for this project right now. So I'm going to get rid of the projectile firing, um, anything off of event begin play, and this reset VR. I'm going to delete all of that. And then we're going to delete everything here under the move forward and move right because we're going to set up a different way of uh, telling the character how to move so that will be independent of the camera, basically. Uh, next, let's go ahead and just delete everything that we don't need. Okay, so your little component list should look something like this right now. Then I'm just going to rename these so they're a little more, uh, I guess, short and um, easy to understand what they represent. So naming the camera to FP Cam, naming the mesh to FP Mesh, and then the gun to FP Gun, just like so. All right, so we'll compile and save now, uh, and then. I'll just get rid of these last two little variables. And now we should be completely ready to go. All right, so talking about the movement, uh, as I mentioned, we're going to set up a different way to do it. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to right click and say get control rotation. And what this does is it gets the rotation of our player controller. Okay, um, so basically we're going to have two different cameras on here, but each one will still be controlled by the player controller, so this rotation will always be the same. So I'll right click, split this, uh, because we just want to isolate one value from it, and that's the yaw. And then we're gonna, so we'll make a rotator based on that. And by default, it plugs into the roll, so just hold control, click, and drag to plug it back into yaw. Now from this new rotator, you can say get forward vector, and this will get us the forward and backward direction. Um, so we'll plug that into world direction, and there we go. We now have our move forward hooked up. Similarly, we're going to say get uh, right vector. Plug that in down here for the movement right, and that'll be for our left and right movement. All right, so there we go. We have that set up. Awesome. We love it. The next thing that we need to do is uh, let's go to our viewport so we can see a little bit of what's going to happen next. So the first thing, we'll take our mesh here, uh, and we're going to reset its transforms all back to zero, just like so. Compile and save that really quick. And then we're going to take our mesh, and we're going to set its skeletal mesh to the SK Mannequin. Now that comes with the animation starter pack, so if you don't have that added, you're not going to see it. So here he is by default. Um, he's not positioned the way we want, so let's fix that. Uh, first we'll change the transform to world instead of relative. Move this down to about negative 90. Hit E to rotate, and we'll rotate them to negative 90. So it should look something like this. All right. Um, let's actually go ahead and lower the capsule half height to about 92. So it looks like he'll be on the floor more. Okay. Uh, then from there, we'll take our camera, the FP cam. I'm gonna hit W to move it, and. We'll kind of move it more to where the height might be. So I'm going to round this off to 75. I'm going to set this the Y value to 0, and then location to negative 20. All right, so that should be good. OK. Now the next thing that we'll do is add in the camera for our third person. Uh, so what we'll do is add a new component 
spring arm okay and this will act as our camera boom okay this keeps the camera uh, or it keeps anything attached to it uh, a certain distance away all right and that distance is defined by this variable target arm length so as you see if, as I scale it it uh, moves it around or moves it closer or farther okay then we'll add a um, okay one thing I want to mention really quick is that if you have a component selected and you add a component it will automatically attach it to that component so uh, just be aware of that so right now I have this selected so I'm going to add a component of type camera and you see that it it attaches it to the camera boom and we'll call this TP cam Compile and save that okay now I'm going to select the camera boom I'm going to move this guy up to about the head height maybe Maybe switch the units to 5 so we can put it at about 75. So it's kind of in line with uh, this camera here. We're at its 75 height. All right. Then we want to take the camera boom and set use pawn control rotation to true. All right. That's very important. And then finally, for the TP cam, we want to scroll down here and find activation and uncheck auto activate. The reason for this is because since we have two cameras, uh, if they both have auto activate set to true, then um, it's going to like cause some like little glitchy issues where it you know it doesn't know which camera to use first because they're both activated at once. So just make sure you only have one activated. Um, and so basically, let's say you want to have you know third person activated first. You can just you know auto activate the TP cam and then unactivate the uh, first person camera. But we're going to stick with starting in first person. All right. Okay. So now we're going to add an input event that will allow us to toggle between the two uh, views. So for that, we're going to go to Edit, Project Settings, and well, I already have my open. Um, but then we'll go down to Input, Action Mappings. Okay, click this little drop down and add a new one. I'm going to call this Toggle Perspective. Okay, and now I'm going to use the T key for this. So we'll go under Keyboard and choose T. And of course, you can use whatever key you want, uh, but I'll just go with this for testing purposes. So back in our first person character's event graph, we're going to right click and search for that newly added event, toggle perspective. Okay, here he is. All right, now in order to kind of determine which perspective we're in, we're going to add a new Boolean variable. And we're going to call this is in FP, question mark. We'll compile that. And then we want to give it a default value of true. So we're starting in, you know, first person basically. Okay. Now off of pressed, uh, we're going to do a branch, and that branch will be we'll take our FP, and we'll do branch because we need to check if we're in first person or not. Uh, because depending on if we're in first person, we will you know toggle either to third person or to first person. All right. So if first person is true, right, uh, then we're going to want to go to uh, third person so we'll come down here and immediately set is in first person to false like that okay so this whole branch here is going to be our um, third person branch so we'll say uh, third person branch just so that we're you know aware of what branch it is now off of false we're going to do the same thing okay except we're going to set it to true because if we're not in first person, then we want to go to first person. So this will be our first person branch. All right, so pretty simple so far. Okay, we'll compile and save really quick. And let's actually, before we do anything, let's just test this out just to see uh, where we're at currently. Um, actually, no, we should we should add on uh, add the animation blueprint to our mesh. So select the mesh, go to anim class choose this go down to the UE4 ACP hero animation blueprint that's the one that comes with the animation starter pack and that's the one that works with this skeleton so if we select it you see he goes into this little mode here okay so we press play and you're gonna see that we're glitching through the character right and that's not what we want all right we're looking around glitching through and that's not good so how do we fix that well the way to fix it is you select the mesh you go down to the rendering options which is down here and you're going to see this uh, little boolean value called owner no see. Now when you set this to true, it basically tells the um, the blueprint to not register that, or not register, excuse me, to not render 
uh, that component. Okay, so we'll say owner no see. So now when we press play, you won't see that you know we're not glitching through it anymore, and that's kind of you know that's good. That's what we wanted. All right, cool. Um, so now that we've done that, you know we can start uh, toggling the visibility of everything. Okay. So the first thing that we'll do is the camera switching. So let's take our FP cam, get him in, and we'll say set active. All right, plug this in. And for the new active, um, you know, this is coming to first person, so we want to set this to active, right? Because we want our first person camera to be enabled. Then we'll take our troop or third person camera, and again say set active. And this one we want to set to false, so just leave it like that. All right. Then we can take this, just duplicate it down here, plug it in, and then we'll just switch the values. So for the third person, right, we want to disable the first person camera and enable the third person camera. Okay, so we can compile and save that. Now if we press play, we should be able to already test it right away. So if we hit T, here we are swapping between our two perspectives. All right, so obviously it looks a little weird. <laughs> um, so we'll go ahead um, and now toggle the character bodies. Okay, so I'm gonna create a little separation really quick just to space things out a little better. All right, so now when we go into first person, right, we want to make sure that our FP mesh here is visible. Okay, so for this we'll say set owner no C um, to false. Okay, um, the reason being because um, right now it's currently false, and that's because we can see it. But once we go into third person, we're going to set owner no C to true. Okay. So we'll duplicate that down here, and we'll set it to true when we go into the uh, third person view. So we'll test that out really quick. We hit T, right? You can't see the arms anymore. You hit T again, you can see the arms once again. All right, now we need to do the same thing, but of course opposite direction for the uh, player's body for this mesh. So we'll drag this out, say set owner no C. This time this one will be true. Right, because this is the first person branch, remember? Duplicate it down here, plug this in, and untick it. There we go. So now if we press play, we hit T, we can see our character body now, uh, but not the first person arms. Hit T again, and we zoom back in. So there we go. Um, the only thing is that the character's body is positioned really weird. I'm not quite sure why that's happening. Um, so Let's just go ahead and rotate his mesh. I mean, it's it's really strange because he is facing the right direction, but for some reason he's rotating. Uh, so we'll just hit E and rotate him 90 degrees this way, I guess. Hit T. Hmm. Something must be preventing him from uh, rotating the correct way. I'll be right back after I figure it out. All right, so not quite sure what was going on there, um, but what I ended up doing is just setting its rotation through the construction script. So just take the mesh, drag it out, say set relative uh, rotation, all right, and then set the Z value to negative 90 and hook it up. All right, that's all you have to do. All right, so once you do that, hit compile, save, press play, hit T, you should see that we switch views. Now the only thing left is just to get rid of the gun, and then we'll be, you know, technically good to go. All right. So that last little part, we'll take our FP gun, okay, and again using the owner no C, we'll say set owner no C. We'll set this to false because this is the first person uh, branch. But then after duplicating it down here, we'll set it to true for the third person branch. So we press play, right? Here's the weapon. Hit T can't see the weapon anymore right but we can move around just nicely and you hit T again and we're back in first person alright so the last thing that we can do for this video is add the third person gun just to really top it all off and uh, show you you know fully how to do um, you know even the weapons even the weapon swapping as well okay um, so what we'll do for that is go to anim starter pack UE4 mannequin mesh and open up the skeleton alright now we want to go find the hand R, 
and we're going to right click and add a new socket. Call this grip point. Okay, then we're going to right click and add a preview asset of the SK FP gun. All right, then we're going to unlock the transform and rotation tools so that we can smoothly move it however we want, and we'll change its transform here to. Um, to relative so that it's more easily more easy to or easier yeah <laughs> to rotate and transform it okay so we have that uh, next we'll go to our first person character go into the viewport we'll add a new skeletal mesh component we'll call this TP gun and I'll attach it to the mesh okay and then we're going to select the FP gun okay now we're going to attach it um, to a parent socket here. So we'll attach it to the grip point socket. right? And you'll see that it's now floating way up here. So if you just reset everything, it should uh, reset nicely. Okay. So now that we have it here, right, we're going to start editing uh, the rotation of it so that we can get it to line up nicely. Okay. So inside of our animation, or inside of our skeleton, with the grip point selected, I'm going to start rotating it, maybe about to there-ish, rotate it down a little bit so it looks like he's holding it. I'm going to hit W, move it outwards, maybe about there, might be okay, and then move it back inside so it looks like he's actually uh, maybe gripping it, maybe a little farther out, something like that. All right, there we go. That I'm happy with that. I'll, you know, I'm fine with that for all. Uh, for our purposes. So if you want to see the final um, values that I have here, here's the all the values if you want to plug those in. Okay, um, so then in the event graph we'll just toggle the third person gun. So take that guy, say set owner no C to true, and then duplicate it down here and set it to false. All right, and then very last thing, we need to select the TP gun, go down to rendering, all right? And again, set owner no C to true by default, all right? Okay, so if we press play now, we should be able to, you know, we only have our first person gun and first person arms showing, we hit T, we have our third person character and third person gun showing. And there we go, so everything is working, it's all really nice and awesome. So really the general idea here is that anything that you want to be kind of third person related, right? Just you just set owner no C to true by default, okay? And then when you toggle it, set owner no C, you know, to false. Um, and then vice versa for the first person stuff, right? So first person would have owner no C uh, be false by default. And then when you toggle, set it to true. Um, and really that's all there is to it, right? It's just a simple kind of just swapping the boolean variable and everything else works out nicely. Um, so here's the code once more. Just going through it really quick. You can see it all. Awesome. All right, so anyways, that's everything, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you liked the video. If you like it, like or subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.